If you bought an iPad for productivity only to end up using it to binge watch on Netflix, I'm gonna help you fix that. Let's turn your iPad into a productivity tool that will actually help you stay focused, organized, and productive. Let me walk you through the setup I currently have. First up is the lock screen. This wallpaper might be familiar to you because this is the same one I have on my MacBook. Again, I made this on Procreate. I also attached a link below where you can download this exact wallpaper for free. Also, I am so, so excited to share that I just launched my website on Ko-fi where I've gathered all of my digital assets and resources. It's still a work in progress though, but if you feel like taking a look or even sharing it, I'd truly, truly be grateful. Now, if you hold your lock screen for a few seconds, you can customize all the little widgets that appear on here. So on top, I have the date and time. I prefer keeping mine on default, but you can change this date widget into any other available app widget, and you can also change the font and color of the displays. On the left, I have two calendar widgets. One is a month view, and the the other is a daily view, which shows me all of my upcoming tasks at specific times throughout the day. Next is the reminders widget, which is so helpful having on here because I can instantly see tasks I need to accomplish. I don't have to open my iPad and I won't end up getting distracted by all the other apps I might end up opening. Below all that is the battery widget for all of my connected devices. You can choose to remove all of these widgets on the left and just keep the date and time for simplicity. But because the new update already allows widgets on the lock screen, I figured I'd take advantage of it to show all the info I need most when I'm studying, even without unlocking my iPad. Now, moving on to my home screen, I have two pages, each for a different purpose, but this one in particular is my default for personal day-to-day -day tasks, anything that isn't study-related. If you've watched my recent MacBook customization video, you'll notice that this layout is quite similar to my MacBook setup. Doing this makes it so much easier to switch between my devices. I don't have to relearn where everything is. I know exactly where to find a specific app, a specific file. Every Everything just becomes second nature. So on the left, I have a calendar widget which displays my time block schedule for the day and for the next two days. Below that is the reminders and notes app which serves as my inbox. So these are for tasks, ideas, or thoughts I need to sort out. Beside my calendar, I have two Notion widgets. One is a list of all my favorite pages and the other is a list of all my recent pages. I have a lot of pages and databases in my Notion workspace, so having this on here makes it easier to access them without having to dig through the entire app. Aside from these, I have two animation widgets. If you know me well enough, you'd know I preach by functional widgets. I hate not man hate, hate is such a strong word, but I tend to avoid widgets that don't really serve a valuable purpose. But when I saw these, I just couldn't resist. I still kept it to a minimum though, just so my setup doesn't get too cluttered. But I think with this one, I've been a little more forgiving. These are the cutest animation widgets you can find. I got them from iScreen. As you can see, there are a lot of cute custom animation widgets you can find here. You can get Polaroid pictures, vinyl style music players. They also have fun functional widgets. Most of them are free. Some you have to unlock by watching an ad. A few of them you do have to pay, but honestly, you can get by with just the free version. There is also another app that offers cute custom widgets, and that is Maiko Miko. Same as Ice Cream, most of these are free. So to add these widgets, go to the app first. I'm using Ice Cream as a reference. Select a widget you like, click on Add Unlock, and once that's done, go back to your home screen, touch and hold, click on Edit at the top, Add widgets, choose ice screen, and make sure to choose the right size for your widget. Once you have that from your home screen, you can choose from all the widgets you've downloaded within the app. Now, along with widgets, I also have folders for my most used apps. I know that there is an app library if you scroll all the way to the end of your home screen, but I still like having my apps on here. Only my go-to apps though, just so I can easily access them. Honestly, if I leave these apps in the library, I'll probably forget they even existed on my iPad. And also, so I don't really like how the library organizes them into folders. So keeping my most essential apps in folders on my home screen just ensures they stay visible without feeling cluttered. I've already organized them into six folders. So we have productivity, creativity, work-related, socials, entertainment, and utilities. I'll go over my favorite apps later on, but for now, let me share my second home screen page. I think you'll really like this one because this is really intended for focus and productivity. Everything on this page is meant to help 
help me stay on top of my tasks and avoid distractions. If you've noticed, the wallpaper for this specific page changed from a previous one and that's because this page is linked to a specific focus mode. So within your Apple devices, whether that be your phone, your iPad, or your MacBook, you can set custom focus modes for different types of activities. As you can see, you can set one for work, for study, for personal activities, and even for when you're sleeping. So focus modes filter out distractions from your app so you'll only be able to see notifications related to work, to studying, the notifications that truly matter to you at certain times. In my case, for example, when I'm studying, I'll only receive notifications from these apps. All other notifications I can view at the end of the day or when this focus mode is off. In addition to notifications, I've also set a custom page to my study focus mode. So when I switch to study focus mode, this page automatically becomes active. No social media app inside, no entertainment app, only the apps I need when I'm studying. Let's go over each of them in detail. Again, I have the calendar widget, this time showing only my schedule for the day. Below that is the Google Drive widget where I can access my recently opened documents. I rarely use my laptop or iPad storage for keeping files. All of my academic files are stored in Google Drive, so this widget is really handy to have. I have Notion reminders and notes, the same widgets as those on my default home screen. The last widget on here is from the app Sessions. Now, this isn't just a Pomodoro timer. This also functions as an app blocker. So the problem I have with focus modes is they only block notifications. They don't actually block you from accessing an app when you're in study focus. So yes, you may not be able to receive notifications, but you may still easily access distracting apps whenever you want to. With sessions though, every time you're within a study session, in my case, that's a 50 minute deep focus session. Of course, it varies for everyone. But when you're in session, you will not be able to access the apps that are on your block list. So if you're trying to sneak in a five minute scroll on TikTok when you're studying, honey, there is no way you will be able to do so. Widgets aside, I have a few apps I've chosen to keep front and center. These are custom icons I made. I'll talk about more of that in a while, but I've been very intentional with the apps I've kept here because I really want to minimize distractions whenever I'm studying. First is Gmail. Next is Google Chrome, which I use for note taking. I have two thorough videos about my note taking system. I also have a free note taking template, so feel free to check them out whenever you have the time. If you've watched those videos, you'd know I use GDocs for taking notes. So why then don't I have Google Docs anywhere on this page? Let me tell you why. The GDocs app for your phone and also for your iPad is quite limited. I would say very limited if I'm being honest here. The app version doesn't really do justice for the features and tools that the website version has to offer. Using the app, I can't really adjust my bullet points. I can't easily copy and paste my heading blocks. I can't change the text to custom colors. The list goes on. So what I do instead is I open my file on Google Drive. I copy the link to that file and then I open the document on Google Chrome instead. This way, I get the website version of my GDocs file. I get all the tools I need for note-taking all within the comfort of my iPad and without having to bring my heavy-ass laptop to school. Next is Google Sheets, which I keep as an app here because I don't really use G Sheets as often as I use GDocs, so I don't really need to access all of its tools. I still keep it on this page though because this has all my trackers for shared documents. I mainly use this for viewing, not so for editing. Next Next is Grammarly, which I use for counter-checking all of my documents, Canvas, our university's learning platform, Zoom for meetings, Scrintal, a visual note-taking app, which I use whenever I need to synthesize a very, very difficult and complex lesson. I've worked with them in the past. I truly love their app, so I would really, really recommend this to all students out there. The last app I have is Canva, which I use for making presentations, posters, infographics, any creative submission for university. On my doc, I only have three apps. Notion, GoodNotes for all my books, handouts, and PDF files related to school, and Anki. Now, let's talk about how to customize your app icons. Truth is, I had to change each and every icon you see here just to keep everything visually cohesive. My team exhausting is really exhausting. Of course, you don't have to do that. You can just keep the default app icons. But if you also want to do this, I wanted to make things easier for you by putting together the set I made. This is a set of more than 100 icons. I also have 
have another version of this in earth tone colors. They're available for just a small fee. This is my first time putting a creative asset I made for a cost, but any support goes a really, really long way in helping me keep creating content like this one. So if you like the icons I'm using and you want to use it on your iPad, feel free to check them out on my website. Again, I have it linked below. So I'm going to walk you through how to set up my icons from the download link. All the icons are compressed in a zip file that is now located in the files app of your iPad. Make sure to click on that to unzip the file and now you'll be able to see all the icons that are available at your disposal. To use these icons, go to the shortcuts app, click on the plus button at the top, rename your shortcut. For this example, let's rename it to Chrome. Click on open app, select Chrome, click on this arrow button at the top, add to home screen, and then choose an image from your files. Once you've selected the appropriate icon, you can go ahead and add that to your home screen and you're done. Now that we've gone over my setup, I'm going to show you the productivity apps I've been loving lately beyond the ones I've already mentioned. First is Paste, which is a clipboard manager. This basically just keeps a history of all the text, links, and even pictures you've recently copied. Next is Freeform, which is an app that mimics a whiteboard, but this one has unlimited canvas so you can sketch, write, and brainstorm to your heart's content. The last one on my list is Sniped without the E. This is a podcast player that allows you to save specific portions of the podcast to your Notion dashboard. So if you like the specific quote or advice from a podcast, you can easily look back on them. And that is my current iPad setup. I know that it's so easy to convince yourself that you need an iPad, buy it, and then forget it even exists. Believe me, I rarely even used my first iPad in the first few weeks after buying it. But this time, I really, really wanted to make my iPad work for my workflow. So hopefully, this gave you a little bit of inspiration to bring yours back to life. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. And thank you so, so much for sticking around. I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!